Arabia today spells trouble and oil. And the political ambitions of Nasser, Bourguiba, Hussein, and Ibn Saud. But behind this tapestry of terror, beyond this arras of ambition, men still struggle for less public and more personal goals, such as a pretty woman. Of such a struggle is our story concerned, a story fully caparisoned with Bernus natives, desert sheiks, and captive damsels. Listen, listen then as Frank Lovejoy stars in Affair at Aden. flat on the ridge back of the rocks and watched the Arab guards a quarter mile down the slope below me as they lounged in front of the gate of Fahad's tribal fort. Before dark, I had to be past those guards and inside that gate. I had to find Beth the Shara. I watched the sun sink lower near the horizon now. In 20 minutes, I would try to enter the fort. The shadows would be longer then, more deceptive, and the guard might not recognize me. The Madrak, the evening breeze of Saudi Arabia, was springing up and the air was cool. I thought of Aden on the coast 80 miles behind me, safe and secure with its paved streets, electricity, American automobiles, and British police. I thought of the commissioner and the way it had all started, late the night before. Commissioner! Mr. Trawley! Commissioner! Yeah, Who's there? John Bradley, geologist for the oil company. Bradley? And we've met at the foreign club. Open up, Commissioner. I've got to talk to you. All right, do a hard moment. Bit of an odd hour for talking, old boy. I know. I'm sorry to bother you, but something's happened. I... Well, yes, I do recall meeting you. You're that American chap. What can I do for you? Commissioner... A girl was kidnapped an hour ago, taken from her room by a gang of Arabs and Girl? Carried... What, what girl? Her name is Beth Tashara. Oh, an Arab girl. Yes, you probably wouldn't know her. She was graduated from the American University in Beirut three months ago and came here to work for the oil company. About an hour ago, she was kidnapped. Yes, go on. Well, her roommate just told me about it. They locked the roommate in the closet when they took Beth. She just now managed to get out. Tell me, Mr. Uh... Bradley. Oh, yes, Bradley. Who are they? Some of the Idrissi tribe, according to Beth's roommate from the... back in the hill country. They were led by Sheikh Fahad. Fahad? Oh, yes, he's Hussein Agra's son. He has a fort or a stronghold of some kind in the Jebel Rabin Pass, about 80 miles back in the hill country. Yes, I know where it is. Well, this Fahad's a young chap, educated in Oxford, strict Muslim. Quite a decent fellow. You could rest easy, Mr. Bradford. There's nothing to concern yourself about. Look, didn't you hear me? I said he kidnapped a girl. He's taking her back into the hills right now. Quite so. It's a custom of the country. An old tradition, marriage by capture. Or a pretense of capture. No doubt the girl was quite willing, actually. This wasn't any pretense. She was kidnapped. Oh, no. Commissioner, Beth and I are engaged to be married. Really? Yes, I'm through here. I'm sailing for home next week, and she's going with me. And, uh... May I ask how long you've known her? Oh, uh, well, two months. But Exactly. I... And as a man of the world, may I point out that young ladies are often prone to change their minds in matters of affection? So I hardly think that... Look, do I understand that you're not going to do anything about this? There's <laughs> not much I can do, you know. All right, I'll do it myself. I'll do what? I'm going into the Jebel Radom Hills, find her and bring her back. I strongly advise against her. For what reason? He's a tribal chief, you know, hundreds of followers. He might make it a bit sticky for you. That's my problem. Don't worry about it. Sorry to have bothered you, Commissioner. No, not at all, old boy. Always glad to... Thanks for your help. Impetuous <laughs> fellow. Bradman, was it? Bradman? No, oh, well. The shadows from the dying sun were growing longer now. Dusk was creeping in over the desert, but the hilltop still caught the last flat rays of light. My horse, tied back of the ridge, stamped impatiently. The guards were moving about restlessly, their rifles slung on their backs. 
I pulled the burnous closer about me, finding it awkward and uncomfortable not being used to native dress. But more uncomfortable were my thoughts. For I realized for the first time since I left Aden that I might be making a complete fool of myself. The commissioner might be right. I remember the last time I'd seen Beth. It was two nights before in the palm garden near my quarters, by the wall of the Mosque of the Shepherds. It is always so warm here at night. In the hill country, it was different. It's like this in Arizona in the summertime. Arizona. Tell me about it. Oh, it's a wonderful country. You'll like Arizona. But will Arizona like me? That is important, too. Ah, oh, sweetheart. Nobody could spend ten minutes around you and not like you. That's how long it took me. You are so beautiful, Johnny. Beautiful? Because you make me feel beautiful. Inside. Like when I hear camel bells way far off in the distance. Or come to an oasis late at night. See the fires where the people are camping. And hear them singing in the dark. It all seems so long ago. Everything is different now. Why? No woman of my tribe ever went to school before, Johnny. I'm different. I hear the caravans of the stranger here, sir. In a few days, I will go with you to live with strangers on the other side of the world. You scared? A little, perhaps. Sometimes I wake up at night and I, I smell the desert in the wind. The old ways die very hard. Hold me, Johnny. Hold me tight. Oh, I intend to from now on. For oh, always. Johnny... You're trembling. What's the matter? Something happened this morning in the bazaar. I saw a person I had not seen for many years. A sheikh of the Idrisi. A man named Fahad. So? He had been away in the hill country. He did not know I had come back to Aden. Then I, I was promised to him. What do you mean? Arrangements were made by our fathers when I was ten years old. Such things are done among the tribes. Well, did you tell him? I mean, about us. I was too frightened to say anything. He called me Little Bride. Then he laughed and he rode on with his men. Well, that's nothing to be frightened about. Johnny, you do not understand. The men of my people are different. The woman does not have the same rights, the privileges. Well, in a week, you'll have all the rights and privileges of an American wife. Oh, Johnny. Hold me. Hold me tight and don't ever let me go. The sun was below the horizon now. The hills lay in shadow. Ten more minutes, it would be dark. Fool or not, win or lose, the chips were down. It was time to go. It was time to go. I mounted my horse, pulled my head cloth up to hide my face, reached inside my robe and took out the roll of parchment scroll with its long crimson streamers of silk, the mark of the desert curry. My whole plan depended upon getting into the fort without being stopped outside by the guards. After that, I'd take my chances. I dug my spurs into the horse's side and holding the scroll above my head with the streamers trailing out behind me on the wind, I rode down the slope at a full gallop. The guards heard me coming, swung their rifles off their back, and held them ready. I spurred the horse and headed straight toward the gate. Miss now! Up to the... Then, at the last moment, two of the guards swung the gate open, and I rode into the courtyard. The guards followed me in, closed the gate behind me. Then another man came striding across the court, and the guards salam. Mandu Bata? Missal. I'm afraid he's mistaken. I'm not a dispatch writer. An Englishman? No, an American. Bradley is the name. Bradley? Oh, yes. I want to see Beth Tashara. Indeed. 
So simple, huh? Except as though you were at home in your own country where everything is nice and safe. You are a fool, Mr. Bradley. So I've been told. I am the Sheikh Fahad. This is my district, the country of the Idrisi. My word here is law. The only law there is. Do you understand? Well, not quite the only law. You're a Muslim. The Koran is your law. I rode in here of my own free will. Your men didn't bring me in as a prisoner. I claim the right of hospitality to strangers, as commanded in the Koran. Uh -huh. Very clever, Mr. Bradley. But I doubt you will gain anything by your sophistry. You must know also that the Koran puts a time limit on such hospitality. Yes, I know. Three days. After which a guest may be treated according to the host's pleasure. And I may as well inform you that I have some rather unusual ideas of pleasure. Meanwhile, welcome, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> The guard took me to a suite of rooms, lavishly furnished, and left me alone. I stood at the window for a long time, looking out at the desert night, with the distant ridges black and pale silver in the moonlight. I knew Beth was somewhere in the fort, and I had to find her and talk to her. Just a minute. What do you want? I'd say you come. Come where? You come now. All right. Let's go. Oh, did I have a choice? Oh, well, naturally. Dinner is never a compulsory affair for a guest. Of course, I could have arranged something more elaborate if I had known you were coming. If you'd known I was coming, I wouldn't be sitting here now. <laughs> that is uh, quite possible. Although the more I consider it, the more the situation intrigues me. Now, look, you know as well as I, I do that... Relax. You Americans are so headstrong. The British, I can understand. But I confess I find you chaps a bit uh, unpredictable. Even irrational, you might say. <laughs> Amusing, however. Oh, yes, we're real clowns. Uh, of course, it is possible you may not be a typical specimen. Every country has its fair share of rash fools. But somehow I... Oh, uh, here comes our other guest. There. Yeah. I imagine this may be a bit of a surprise to her. Uh, good evening, my dear. Won't you join us? I have already told you. You all right, Beth? Yes, I... You should not have come here. I shouldn't. You are not being very hospitable, my dear. And Mr. Bradley has, I might say, demanded my hospitality by taking advantage of a passage of the Koran which was written, I'm inclined to suspect, in one of the Prophet's less inspired moments. I had. However, I... in Allah, so be it, for the traditional three days. Afterwards? Well... That will depend on my disposition at the moment. Tell him about our plans, my dear. What plans, Beth? What is he talking about? You will have to forgive her. The natural modesty of a young girl in love. Beth and I are being married tomorrow. A lovely addition to my household, don't you think so, Mr. Bradley? Johnny, I... I find her completely fascinating. Of course... I will have to compromise a bit with tradition, I imagine. Beth would hardly be satisfied with all the old ways. But since she, too, is willing to compromise... Well, my dear? Is it true, Beth? Or are you going to marry him? Are you? Yes. I'm sorry, Johnny. You should not have come here. Going back to my quarters. Thank you very well. Beth, wait. I want to talk to you. Beth, I was sorry, Johnny. There is nothing more to say. I told you. The desert ways die hard. 
Go back to Aiden. Forget about me. Goodbye, Tony. <laughs> cursing myself for being fool enough to come. It was after midnight by now. The fort was dark and silent. I'd gotten in safely now to get out. I moved quietly to the door and listened. There was no sound outside. I turned the handle slowly. The door opened and there in the corridor stood a veiled woman. You are very foolish, Mr. Bradley. Everybody is telling me that. Should I know you? No. No, I am Tara Dalisi, wife of Fahad. Wife? Yes, at present his only wife. And I would prefer it to remain so. Sorry, I'm out of it. Better go talk to Beth to Charlotte. Why? I've got nothing to do with it now. If that's what she wants, it's her business. What she wants? Did Fahad ask what she wanted? What do you mean? Oh, is it so different in your country, Mr. Bradley? Can any woman be sure what she wants unless some man tells her and then proves it? So? If I help you escape from here tonight, will you take that to Shaha with you and keep her with you? It might not be so easy. She may not want to go. What she wants, what she wants. What do you want, Mr. Bradley? All right. You've got a deal. Twenty minutes later, I was outside the fort waiting in a dark grove of olives with two horses tied nearby, watching a tiny door in the high stone wall. Ten more minutes passed, I started to get uneasy. Tara seemed to know what she was doing, but with Beth, I figured she'd have her hands full. Then the door opened, two figures in white stood for a moment in the dark entrance. And one of them hurried toward me, the door closed. I stepped from behind the tree. Beth. Johnny. Over here. Hurry. There's really no need to hurry, Mr. Bradley. None of us is going anywhere. Tara really shouldn't have encouraged you to wander around in the night air this way, my dear. Your hands, Mr. Bradley. Put them up, please. I can't argue with a gun. Mm -hmm. Very wise of you. Especially since you've seen fit to forsake my hospitality. You see, I'm no longer obliged to treat you as a guest. What are you going to do, Fahad? What would you do, Mr. Bradley, with the man who took advantage of your generous nature and attempted to plunder you of your most prized possession? Pretended to stop. What are you doing? Just this. All right, go ahead and shoot if you want to kill Beth. Oh, a sample of American chivalry? No, common sense. For added precaution, I'm holding my own gun in her back. Don't come any closer. It's not my fault. It was crazy enough to do it. I'll admit I'm at somewhat of a loss, Mr. Bradley. What are you going to do? I'm leaving here on those horses. I'm taking Beth with me. You try to stop us, I'll kill her. And gain what? Nothing, but I won't lose anything either. You've never intended to let me leave here alive. At least I'll take her with me one way or another. You must be insane. Also practical. Because you'll never convince her people that you didn't kill her. I know what a blood feud means in this desert. So do you. Now, do you want one on your hands? Do you turn around and walk back to that fort and let us go? I think perhaps you're mad enough to do it. I'm mad. Plenty mad. All right, make up your mind. Well, there are, after all, a rather large number of women in this world. But a man has only one life. And if he's sensible, he prefers to keep it as peaceful as possible. Uh, good night, Mr. Bradley. Miles away, certain finally that we weren't being followed, we pulled the horses to a stop. 
Want to rest a few minutes? Yes, sir. There you go. I'll give you a hand down. Thank you. I'm not used to this. There was a time when I could ride all day. Oh? I thought you said the old ways of the desert stayed with a person. They died hard. Johnny, I, I only said that because... Look, I didn't ask you if you wanted to go back to Aiden. Nevertheless, I'm taking you there. After that, you're on your own. Oh, Johnny. You are such a fool. Well, you too, hmm? I only said what I did tonight because of you. If I had not agreed to marry him, the heart would have had to strangle before morning. Because of me? I love you, Johnny. So much so that I would rather you had shot me back there when you threatened to. And to leave me with him. Come here, darling. Johnny. You know something, honey? I couldn't have shot you. I didn't have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> 